King of Zion, Lion of Judah, reign, Jesus reign. Reign in my life, reign, Jesus reign. Yes, Lord, you have to reign today. Reign, Jesus reign. King of Zion, King of Zion, Lion of Judah, reign, Jesus reign. Le baga shatara baba baba, le mogo shatara baba baba. This is our daily bread 22. We have a few days to finish this month. God bless you. God bless you. I want you to, to share this on your wall. Invite your friends and your families. Le bagashi korobobo no bogo satara baba baba. La magasi karabali probo shotoro bobo bobo bobo. God is reigning in our life. God is reigning in our business. God is reigning in our ministry. God is reigning and you continue to reign. Le korobo shakara baba baba. Le magasi korobo bobo le bogo shotoro bobo bobo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, my brother, for sharing. Thank you, thank you, thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. We give you all the glory and adoration. We worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. We adore you, Holy Spirit. Have your way, O oh Lord, that your name will be glorified. Le magasho korobo le kere baba satara baba baba. La brigo sotoro bobo ye kende re baba shantara baba baba. Le bragashi korobo bobo sotoro bobo bobo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for reigning in our life. Thank you for reigning in our ministry. Thank you for reigning in our business. Thank you for reigning in everything that we do. Oh Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We give you all the glory and adoration. Let us pray. The entrance of the word of God bringeth life and understanding to the simple. Father, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we will hear and speak now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. We give you all the glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Jesus is reigning. Hallelujah. And he's going to continue to reign in your life, in your business, in your ministry, in your job, in your activities, in your health. Jesus will reign. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Limagashi koro bobo bobo. Lebrogo satara baba baba. Lamaba shantara baba baba. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word for us today is honor. The key that changes seasons. Every season that you see that come and go, there is something that happened behind the scene. As a man, as a woman, as somebody that is created by God, the word of God for us today is honor. How many of us have decided to honor God this year, 2018? Because your sense of value in life determines the, the flow of virtue. How you value God? I told you that honor is the highest level of leadership and, and respect that you can give to any leader. When you see somebody as a leader, you might like them or you follow them. But when you respect somebody as a leader, you obey them. But when you honor somebody as your leader, you don't say it by your word. You don't just say, I honor you or I love you. You honor them, you begin to give them gift. Honor introduces gift. So the Bible said in the book of Proverbs 39, it said, Honor the Lord your God with thy substance and with the faith, first fruit of thy increase. The year just began. People don't understand that God is a God of principle. I will put it this way. Every time God put us in charge of something, God expects something back. And honor is the highest level of respect that you can give to a person. As our God, we honor him. You don't honor somebody with your mouth. 
when you receive an award, it's an honor. They give you something. God loved us so much that he didn't say he loved us. He gave us something. God gave us himself. The Bible says in, in the book of John, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So what are we talking about honor today? The Bible says, honor the Lord your God with your wealth and with the first fruit of your crops. So God expects us to honor him as he increases us in everything. And many of us, this is just the beginning of the year. It is a better opportunity to take a gift out of what God has blessed you with. Honor does not come from a debt. Honor comes from what you are increased. That's what you give to God. So I want you to know that when you honor God, there is no way you don't receive something back. Let's just go to the word of God this hour. Second Samuel chapter 9. Lebrogo Shakara Bababa. Lemagasitara Bababa. I'm just going to paint the picture. I talked to us last time about who is your friend, Jonathan or Jonadaba. The same Jonathan made a covenant with David when David was just a servant of Saul and he put his robe on David. He respected David and he said, I know that you will be king, but don't forget me. Many years down the line, David has become king. The house of Saul has been destroyed, decimated. And one day, probably the Spirit of God came into David and David began to ask questions in 2 Samuel chapter 9. If that's one, he asks, is there anyone from Saul's family that is still alive? Is there any man or woman, anybody left in the family of Saul? And he got an answer from one of the servants of Saul that lived there, Ziba. The Bible says, and Ziba answered him, yes, there is one person left, and that is the son of Jonathan. I told you, Jonathan made a covenant with David. And he never broke it. In fact, he gave his life for David to be king. If Jonathan was alive by tradition, David cannot be king, even though that the prophets have said it. But by tradition, the next person to be king, because it was hereditary, will be Jonathan. So Jonathan died with his father in that battle. Now, David is about to honor the word that he made as a covenant with his friend. And they found that somebody was alive. Mephishobet. I'm, look, I'm looking at Second Samuel chapter 9 and the king asked in verse 4 where is he? And they told him he was in Ledoba. And Ledoba, the word Ledoba is a place that is empty, a dry place, a lonely place. And this guy, Mephishobet, the son of Jonathan, the only surviving lineage of Saul, was left in a lonely place, a dry place. This is a grandson of a king, the first king of Israel. But David said that they should go get him. But I wanted to see what happened. And when they brought Mephishopet to David from Ledoba, David looked at him and said that you will eat with me every day. Look at what David said. When David called Mephishopet in verse 7, he said, don't be afraid. David told him, because I will certainly show you great love for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the fields of your grandfather. Father Saul, and you will eat in my table always. But I want you to see the response of Mephishobet. I don't know where you have been, and the devil have beaten you so low, and you are feeling that things will not change your life. Look at what Mephishobet said. He said, Mephishobet bowed low out of respect and said, Who am I, your servant, that you should care about a dead dog like me? Mephishobet conf conf confessed that he's a dead dog. This is a son of a, a king, a grandson of King Saul. Now, considering himself as a dead dog, but David honored the word that he told Jonathan. He did not confess it. He did something. He restored every property. I'm talking about landed property. The king in those days had properties everywhere. All his lands, he restored it back to Mephishobet. But not only that, David went further to say that you will sit in my table. You will eat with me all the days of your life. And he commanded Ziba and his sons and the servants of Ziba to continue to serve Mephishobet and cultivate on his soil and sell the product and give the money to Mephishobet for the rest of his life. So Mephishobet was considered now one of David's sons because he sat on the table. Honor. It introduces a new season. Let me tell you something. Honor is a currency of heaven. The moment you honor God, 
and you begin to honor the people in position of authority in your life, there is no way that the earth and the galaxies and the universe and the world will not respond back to you. In the place of honor, it brings about gift. It, it changes the season. You might be in the season of lack now, in the season of dryness. Like here where we are in America, it's cold. A lot of things are just very, very slow now because of the weather. But let me tell you, a man of honor will bring forth in his season. It will bring forth fruit in every season. Your leaf shall not wither. Everything you sow shall bring the desired result. In the name of Jesus Christ. Honor the Lord your God. Hallelujah. With thy substance. When I told you about giving God gift, it's not money. But you can convert money because money is the currency that we use on earth. But God does not ask for money. God asks you for anything that he has increased in your life. Let's look at First Samuel chapter 10 also. This is now before Saul became king. Hallelujah. First Samuel chapter 10. Look at what happened here. Saul was the tallest man in Israel at his time. Very dynamic, well-built young man. He was a warrior also. Very, very aggressive. And everybody loved him. And the children of Israel began to demand for a king from God. And God told Samuel, I'm going to send the king to you. While Samuel was praying and asking God, who shall be the next king? And God said, I will send him to you. But here comes Saul, his father's ass lost. And the ass was very valuable. I told you that an ass is like a, a limousine of a Rolls Royce in our time. A, an ass is a small kind of donkey, very, very small. But it's a, a small kind of horse, but it's a donkey. So Saul and his, the servant of his father began to look for the ass everywhere. They went from city to city, from, from town to town. And they came to the place where Samuel was living. And Saul asked all of his servants, what shall they do? And they say, we can go to the house of Samuel to ask of that. And Saul said, no, I can't get into the house of the prophet with nothing. If you look at in, in chapter 9, hallelujah. When Saul said that, it triggers something. He said, I can't get into the house of the prophet. I can't get into the house of the man of God without nothing. And he said, I don't have money. And they began to search among themselves. And one of the servants said, we have some money here with us. And he asked them how much. And what they have was about four, 400 shekels of silver. And 40 shekels of silver. And Saul so collected that silver and took it and presented to Samuel. And asked Samuel about their ass that was missing. But Samuel said, your ass has been found. But you didn't come here for an ass. I want you to sit down. I will talk to you tomorrow. And as they sat and they ate and drank with Samuel, by the next day, Samuel began to reveal unto him. Because the moment he walked into the house of Samuel, God opened the eyes of Samuel that this is the next king. How did Saul receive that? Even though God has not spoken to anybody concerning it, Saul presented a gift to Samuel. And that gift triggered the new season in his life. Whatever you address will speak to you in life. He knew that there is no way to come to the house of the man of God with nothing. He addressed him. He saw him in the prophet. The Bible says if you give a prophet a cup of glass in the name of a prophet, you receive a prophet reward. If you give a pastor a glass of water in the name of a pastor, you receive a pastoral reward. If you give a bishop a cup of water in the name of a bishop, that position will begin to work for you. So what you address, what you respect is what speaks to you. Hallelujah. In the place of conversation, destiny is being decided. And he came in with a gift. And that triggered something. Hallelujah. Who you honor in life determine what you receive. So Saul honored Samuel, and Samuel began to ask questions in the spirit. And something happened. And from there, it was now introduced to him that Saul was the king. And if you look at First Samuel, where we wanted to read in chapter 10, verse 1, he said, And Samuel took the veil of oil by the next thing and poured upon the head of 
Saul and kissed him and said, it is not because the Lord had anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. God now gave Saul for the first time the inheritance of God. What God had promised the children of Israel, God had put it on board Saul. Saul was not supposed to be king. By the hierarchy of what their grandfather Jacob prophesied to his kings, Judah was the rightful king because the Bible says in Genesis 49 that the scepter of authority, of power, of leadership shall not depart from who? Judah. How come Saul, a Benjamite, became king? Remember what the father told Benjamin? He said, Benjamin is like a, 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 a very nice was, was what called flower that grew. But he said, Benjamin shall devour the prey in the morning and divide the spoil in the evening. Benjamin never acted in his time because his father guided him, his brother Joseph guided him because he was so precious. He was the last of last. And you know, remember when uh, Rachel was giving birth to Benjamin, she died. After Benjamin was born, she gave him a name called Benoni and the father changed the name to Benjamin. He said, because you have cost me so much soon. And that child, that pregnancy was a troubled pregnancy. But Benjamin was protected with everything that Jacob had. Because after Joseph was missing for years and they, they told a lie that the animal devoured him, their father did everything to keep Benjamin. But what happened now? Benjamin lived his life. We never heard about him, whether he accomplished much. But he was just there. Here comes Saul, a Benjamite, becoming the king for the first time in Israel. This is against the, the, the hierarchy, against the order of Jacob. But God began to do something for Benjamin. What happened? The first place he went, I tell you about ancestral connection. The first thing that happened, he said, when thou shalt depart from me, First Samuel chapter 10 verse 2, so Samuel was talking to Saul now. Thou shalt find two men at Richard's sepulchre in the border of Benjamin at Zilzah, and they will say unto thee, thy ass which thou waited to seek are found. And lo, thy father had left the care of us and sorrow for you, saying, what shall I do for my soul? What is the connection with Saul to Richard's sepulchre? From the time Saul became king to the time Richard died, probably 600 years has passed, because the children of Israel were in captivity for 470 years. And if you add all those things together, maybe 700 years, 800 years have passed. But Richard's sepulchre was still notable because Jacob loved Rachel. So where Rachel was buried was well built. So after all this is, it was still remembered that when Saul left the house of Samuel, the first place that men saw him and greeted him was at Richard's sepulchre. The, the connection, Richard was the, the mother of Benjamin. Now Benjamin has become great. So that was the connection to his foundation. First, the next group that saw him in verse 3, and thou shalt go on forward from thence, and thou shalt come to a plain of Tabor, and there shall meet with thee three men going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three kids, and another carrying three loaves and bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, and they will salute thee and give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive in their hand. This man was just a sort of a, a wealthy man that was a farmer. But all of a sudden, he has become king. It has not been announced on the radio. It has not been put on the newspaper. There was no coronation that was done. There was no ceremony. But the moment he left the presence of the man of God, because of he brought gift to Samuel, he honored Samuel, and the oil came upon him. That triggered something. A new season came to his life. When you honor God, let me tell you something. Your seasons will begin to change for favor, for good. The Bible said, and this man came, and they saw Saul, they worshipped him. They didn't know who he was. But what, all of a sudden, people are beginning to see value in Saul. He has become king. It has not been announced. He doesn't even have a royal apparel or a crown to show that he has been made king. But how come all these people are coming from the woodwards, bowing down, saluting him, giving him gift? Let me tell you, a place of honor is a place that you want to be alive. When you have honored God, the key that changes your season in life is to honor. Honor the Lord your God with thy substance. It changes every season. I don't care what season you are in. You might not be in a season of harvest. But the moment an honor comes in, it changes that season. You begin to receive unusual favor. You begin to use, receive un, unimaginable grace. Things that 
normally will not happen, will begin to break down. Territories will be destroyed. This guy was not scheduled to be king by the hierarchy of Jacob. Jacob said that Judah will rule his brothers. But what happened? Benjamin became the first king of Israel because of honor. Saul honored the prophet and it releases his blessing. Even the prophet didn't know who will be king. He asked God, God said, I will introduce the man to you. And here comes the man into the house of the prophet. A new season has come to your life. Until you begin to understand the principles of God. Things might not really change. It might take longer. But when you understand how to apply the principles of God to, to activate your blessing. This year, you will honor your God. You will honor your father with the substance and with thy wealth. You will not be a man. Let me tell you, if you don't love God, you can't give to God. So even if you preach it from today till tomorrow, nothing will happen. You have to be a man that have love for the kingdom. Have love for thy father. Have love for the men and women of God in your life. And you start to see. Because they will be the one to activate those things. This guy honored someone with gift of silver. The Bible said it, it triggered something. And the blessing came upon him. The oil was poured and he became king. A new season was introduced. Now, different group of people are meeting. Look at the third group that met with him. Lekroba, Shakara, Baba, Lama, Mama. He said, after thou shalt come to the hill of God, where there are garrisons of Philistines, and it shall come to pass that when thou come hither to the city, that you shall meet a company of what? Prophets. Coming down from the high place with a psaltery, which is music and tablet and pipe and harps before him and they shall prophesy wow something is about to happen to you because prophecy is coming your life now everything that you have heard before that you have been prophesied to as you honor god in this month don't let it pass this month you can do it next week you can do it before next week but honor god with something that you have received this year take a gift to god and say lord this is my first fruit and when you put it in the altar, you will start to see the prophecies of God begin to ma 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 maximize in your life. The prophecies of God that have been spoken to you. And if you have not received, received prophecy before, this is your opportunity. Because God is about to enlarge your coast. The Bible says, and they shall prophesy to you. And what you shall also prophesy. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. Verse 6. And thou shalt prophesy with them, and thou shalt turn what into another man. The Lord shall put something in your life that will change you from who you used to be to somebody else. God will bless you so much that you shall turn to another man. You shall turn to another woman. You shall turn to another person. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Le korobo shakara bababa. La magashi turobo boli kendere baba. Satara bababa. Le brobo shokorobo boli kendere baba. Santara mamama. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh no. Hallelujah. The key that changes seasons. Every time you put on, when God created man, God told Adam and Eve specifically, he said, the, the, the tree in the mix of the garden is my own. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. They disobeyed God. They dishonored God. They lost paradise. Hallelujah. Libra, chapter Baba. Cain and Abel, when it was their time, God said, honor me with something. And they brought their gift. And Abel brought the best of what he had and presented it to the altar of God and his sacrifice was received. God never told them who he received his own. But Cain can see the smoke of Abel going straight to the heavens and he was angry and killed his brother. In the time of Noah, what happened? When God wanted to destroy the world because of all the things that have happened in this earth, God told Noah, said, collect every animal in twos, the male and female, male and female, for reproduction and for pro pro procreation, hallelujah, for posterity. And he did all that. God now says, select the seven clean animals. And he selected them. And after the flood, when they came back, the Bible said, Leborobo Shatarababa, Lamagasitorobobo. God told Noah, say, take the seven clean animals. Don't eat them, nothing. Just offer them to me. That is my portion. Out of the earth, God selected the seven. What are you using to honor God today? Honor the Lord with thy substance. And with the increase of thy wealth. Honor the Lord thy God with thy substance. And with the increase of thy wealth. Let me tell you. When you bring a man of honor. When you honor God. Men shall honor you. When you honor thy Lord. Women shall honor you. And here comes Saul. Prophesying. 
prophesying with prophets because there is a new man in him. When your identity change, changes, your resources and capacity will change. This man was just a man that was served his father before. The son of a wealthy man. All of a sudden, he's now a man that was anointed king. His capacity and his ability has changed. His authority also has changed. Whenever you recognize the new identity, you will enjoy your new season. Some people, when God begins to elevate you, you don't understand. And you continue to stay in your own identity. It is time to put on a new identity. The identity that God has put up upon you. Identity of royalty. The prodigal son, when he came back home, the first thing that God did was to remove the filthy cloth on him. Remove the cloth of shame and reproach of sin. The cloth of lies and deceit. And put on the robe of royalty. And there was a ring that was put upon his hand. And there was a feast and a new shoe. Let me tell you something. You are about to be celebrated. But before that will happen, you have to celebrate God. It is time to celebrate your father. Celebrate Jesus Christ. Put a gift and say, Father, this is my first fruit for the year that we are just entering. Let it be what will transfer everything that you have given to me. Let it be what will change the positions of my life. And you start to see things begin to change. Make a declaration. Specific declaration. Don't just throw out gift out there. But make sure that this gift has been incubated with words. Because let me tell you, words have power. It has power. Paul said that the kingdom of God is not just in words, but in power also. The words that we speak, they are not anything. They, they are truth and they are life. And they are also spirits. When you send them out, the Bible says he sent this word out. And he let them. Let the power of God begin to activate in you the honor that will bring glory into your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray now. Hallelujah. Those that recognize your new identity will also celebrate with you. But those that did not recognize your new identity will exit your life. It, uh, it, there's no two ways about it. I've been... Uh, uh, I've been Somebody that have an experience of that. When God began to do some great things in my life, things that are unusual, uncommon blessings, I have seen God in the mountain top and I've seen him in the valley. So I can tell you when God moves, I can tell you how excited it is. I can tell you how great and the kind of joy that comes into you. But I, I began to see people that were standing with me before. They begin to exit my life because they couldn't embrace what God is doing. People that knew me as just a pastor, in fact, when, when I became a pastor, the people that introduced me to the church that I was ordained the pastor, they couldn't believe it that it didn't take much time because of what God did, they exited my life. They were very angry because they have been in that church. They have served there. I didn't do any special thing. But when the grace of God is upon you, the same thing when God elevated us in this state of Georgia and I was consecrated a bishop, it caused a lot of trouble among my friends, among the church, among our, our, our college of bishop, people were angry, some people were happy. But a lot of people that could not embrace that change, they exited our life. That is what is going to happen to you. So don't be worried when you start to see people begin to exit your life. They will not comprehend what God is doing. They couldn't believe that God have put you in that position. God have honored you. Because when you honor God, you carry honor. When you carry favor, every level will be broken. Today, I command that level shall be destroyed in your life. You can never labor this year. You will carry favor everywhere you go. And men shall honor you. Women shall honor you. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you are a man of honor. A royal priesthood. A chosen generation. A peculiar nation. The apple of God's eye. Do you know who you are? You are both a priest and a king. You have both authority in the supernatural. And you have authority in the physical. That is what royal priesthood is. You are royalty in, on, on earth here. So you have authority. You have power. To undo things that are physical. And you are royal. You are also priesthood in the supernatural. You have authority by the name of Jesus Christ. To change things. How do you activate this? Is honor God with the substance that God has given to you. And you will see God move in your life. I thank God for your life. I bless you. Le kera ba chukuru bo bo bo. Lama gasi kara ba ba li brogo sotro bo bo bo. Ye kende ba ba shanta ba ba ba. Le brogo sotro bo le kanda ba ba. Le brogo si kara ba ba. The Bible says, while the earth remaineth, we are still in the earth. Seed time and harvest shall not cease. Today, as you begin to bring that honor and present it to God in your local church, 
in whatever you worship and you have placed. Make sure that you are giving, not just because I said, but you are giving because you want to give God. You love God. God loves a cheerful giver because this is your season. This is your year of fulfillment of destiny, fulfillment of prophecy, fulfillment of blessings, fulfillment of the will of God, fulfillment of everything that you want to be fulfilled. This year it shall happen. But how can you activate it? Take thy first fruit and honor God and you see God move for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all the glory and adoration. We bless you, Father. I command I commit all these your sons and daughters unto thy hand. Right now, as they have listened to us, honor Father, let honor begin to locate them. They shall be honored by men and women. They shall honor men also and women that are in a position of authority in their life. I release unto them all over the grace to be above and not beneath. The grace to go forward and not backward. The grace to be the head and not the tail. Let honor begin to locate your sons today as they begin to honor God. That their seasons will begin to change. Their seasons will begin to change for good. Seasons will begin to change. Everything that has been tied will begin to loosen up. Everything that is tied to their lineage, ancestral deities, familiar spirit, the, the spirit of God begin to change it. We give you all the glory and adoration. We worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. We, we worship you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lord, I thank you for today. This is just the beginning. Hallelujah. As the week goes forward, their life will start to transform for good. Transform and change everything. Change in your season has come. Your season has changed. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to look at the seasons of dryness, the seasons of hardship as they begin to evaporate because you are in a new season now. A season has been introduced into your life. I told us last time, when you are in your time, and your time meet with the time of God, a season will be introduced. Hallelujah. Now, a good season has come to you. A season of blessing. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I give you all the glory and adoration, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for everything. Have your way, O Lord, that your name will be glorified. Blessed be the holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cover everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice with the blood of Jesus. Let the blood that speak better things than the blood of Abel begin to speak in their life. I say let the heavens begin to fight for them. Let their heaven continually to be open and their earth will begin to bring forth. From today, men shall honor you. Women shall honor you. As you begin to honor your father, honor God. Your head will continue to wear crown by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Your angels shall go ahead and make every crooked ways in your life to be straight. I release upon you the angels of goodness and mercy, the angel of grace and favor. They shall work for you. These four angels will always be by your side. From today, you shall experience unlimited favor, unlimited grace. Everywhere you go, the grace shall work for you. Grace will work for you. By the same spirit and the same authority, the same power that came upon so, on the day he was consecrated, let the power of God begin to transform you to another man, transform you to another woman, to another person, by the same auction and power, in the name of Jesus. On the day Jesus was baptized, the Bible says, and the heavens opened, and God spoke, said, this is my son, we would and we were pleased. He said, listen to him. Today I say, by the same auction, men shall listen to you, women shall listen to you. You shall never be in a tight corner anymore. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we know that you have done it. We give you all the glory and adoration. We worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. 
Receive it. Whatsoever you are looking for shall be looking for you right now. I say, those of you that are sick in the body, I release the healing power of God upon you. By the tribe of Jesus Christ, you are healed. You shall walk in the favor of God. Your body shall be receptive and your body shall walk with you. You will not be sick anymore. Every sickness of infirmity, I cast you out by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, leukemia, get out now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lebo go shakara ba 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 ba. I say, receive favor. From today, you must be honored. I don't care where you have been despised before, you will be appointed. Oh, come on, from today, people will start to seek value in you because you have valued God. Because the value you place upon a thing shall determine the virtue that will come from it. When you embrace your new season, your new identity, you will enter into a new dimension. I say a new dimension will begin to work for you now. By the same unction and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Begin to spend honor in your life because honor is the currency of heaven as faith is the currency of the kingdom. When you begin to honor God, you have tapped into the currency of heaven and heaven will begin to honor you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead of you and we are going to come back tomorrow. Today is the 22nd. We still have a couple of days for this prayer session to end. We are going to be here till the end of the month. And connect with us. Follow us. At this time, every day we are always on. You will get notifications. God bless you. My name again is Bishop Dr. Chukwode. It's over. Have a wonderful day. I love you, but Jesus loves you the more. In Jesus' name, amen.